Hello and welcome to Self-Sufficient Conversations. I'm your host, Natalie, and we'll be talking with Sam from Gardening with Sam in this week's episode in our podcast series, where we explore what self-sufficiency means to others. Self-sufficiency means something different to everyone. And for me, I couldn't achieve self-sufficiency without incorporating foraged foods, bartered goods, and selling my excess for pantry staples. Can you explain what self-sufficiency means to you? Um, so we're just like starting. So we want to be like self-sufficient by like trying to grow as much as possible we can, um, as well as sharing within our community if we could, as well as like we're on tank water. So trying not to use all that because we need all the water that we can possibly have. Yeah. And we're also mainly on as well. So using all the resources around us nice. to um, live our life. Lovely. And you mentioned that you started growing to help your children have the same sort of childhood that you had. Um, (laughs) And you were doing that in your urban backyard before you moved to the farm. Can you tell me a bit about that? Yeah. So um, we had like eight raised veggie gardens and yeah, we just grew seasonally and ate mostly what we grew as well and just trying to encourage like the children to know where the fruit and veggies come from yeah and um yeah it looks like from growing to dinner so it helps them eat their veggies as well which is great for us because sometimes that's a struggle but um you're just showing them and like we moved to the farm just so we could have chickens and like an orchid and like grow more food as well to help them understand and give them that lifestyle of knowing where the food comes from. Nice. So, yeah, we weren't sufficient there. Like it was a bit hard. So we just, we also volunteered at the community gardens with my daughter um, at the time before COVID. And um, yeah, so we got lots of veggies there, learned a lot of skills as well because they had different gardens like permaculture so yeah we're just learning from them and we're just trying to teach her and enjoy nature I think that's the most important thing is that even though at that time you weren't on a lot of land you're still making use of the space that you had and starting your growing and learning journey which is exactly what I did as well Yeah. (laughs) yeah it taught us a lot of skills as well and I grew up like with a family garden and like pet chickens and stuff. So yeah, it's a great skill to have. Yeah, it is. I was the same, except we didn't have any pets. It was just a little bit of a garden and I was able to see how mum did everything. And I took that with me in our, in our place and expanded on that. <laughs> um, no, well, we ate our pets. Sorry? <laughs> We ate our pets. <laughs> My parents. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> well, we eat our pets here too, but we tell our kids that we're eating. Yeah. Well, our, the animals that we eat aren't our pets. We have pet animals and then we have our animals. Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah, these were like chickens and rabbits. So. <laughs> uh, what are your goals for your new, new space? You touched on that you want to grow as much as possible, but how will you start implementing um, some of those goals? Yeah, so at the moment we're still in the design stage because nice. like, it can be a bit overwhelming, so we need to step, take it step by step. Yeah. So, yeah, our goals is to... We're installing more rainwater tanks for the future veggie gardens, so we don't use our house resources and our goal is yes to grow a lot more veggies and be more seasonal and reduce our shopping from like buying fruit and veggies from the shops as well so because we are a little bit out of town so it just saves us with that drive Mm. and so yeah so goals is to get that and then get some like sheep and chickens to help build on the compost so we don't have to bring in that resource as well like compost and yeah just yeah more fruit and veggies and yeah just using as much as land as possible so then in the future we both can work part-time or retire early (laughs) sounds good (laughs) how many acres are you on at your new place um yeah we're on 15 acres so we do have our house and then our paddock 
but our paddock does have like motorbike tracks and stuff. Mm. So, but yeah, 15 nice acres. It's just currently covered in Patterson's Curse, which was a bit of a setback. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Do you have any ways that you're going to move forward with that to help regenerate your land? Um, yeah, with the Patterson's Curse, we're just like, just going to just keep on top of mowing at the moment. It's just dying back. And then we're getting in sheep as well. <laughs> Sorry, hubby. <honey, just laughs> your plan is to kill it. My plan is more organically. <laughs> so we... Because I want bees in the future, so yeah. you can't use chemicals. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so we'll use like sheep and like just trying to get on top of it. It's, it's hard because I know there's beetles and stuff, so we're trying to look at more organic approaches to um, destroy it all, but that's a little bit hard. So, about the, the beetles, so, yeah, do they actually kill yeah. the plant itself? Um, well, I've looked into it. Apparently they eat the roots and stuff, so okay. it does, but I don't know how many beetles you need for 15 acres. You wouldn't need quite a bit because it's yeah. covered. But and are they we isolated? can't get sheep until we... Yeah. Sorry, the are the... Patterson's the, Curse? Or... Yeah, do the beetles yeah. just eat the Patterson Curse's roots or do they eat other plants' roots? Yeah. <laughs> Um, that's what I need to get like a bit more because I don't want to start a garden and then introduce beetles and then it will attack my garden. That's right, yeah. But, um, apparently the government used to yeah, use them, so okay. but this year is bad because of um, all the wet season because we were apparently in drought for like 10 years and then yeah, okay. this season... Patterson Curse went crazy in our area because it's out of drought. Okay. So the Patterson Curse um, is toxic to sheep if they were to eat it? Um, they can stay on the land for two years because okay. we've been researching. Like neighbours have cattle and some neighbours have sheep as well. But unfortunately, some of their um, sheep have passed away because of the Patterson's Curse. Wow. Okay. So, yeah, they can – there's certain type of sheep. So animals can be on it for two years. And then they got to be rotated out. But okay. as long as you have different um, vegetation for them to eat, it should be all good. So as long as their main diet's not person curse, okay. then um, they'll be fine. That's so really interesting. We do. We have berries as well, so mm. goats could be another option. But mm. we just don't know if we can them because they're a bit wild <laughs> yes they can be <laughs> which is why i haven't gotten goats yet <laughs> but we also have infestation of um blackberries so we're trying to find an approach to mm. tackle that as well yeah yeah i hear you there <laughs> what would be your biggest tip for someone who's at the beginning of the journey of wanting to grow some of their own food what would be your biggest tip to, to yep. give them to start? Yeah, just have a go, really. Like, stuff will die, but as long as you have a go and it's all about the soil, so if you have good soil, stuff will grow because, like, everything in life wants to live. So, yeah, just water it, have a go, and, like, try grow stuff that's seasonally for your area because yep. then that's more most likely going to survive. Yeah, so as long as, yeah, that's what I tell people. Like, just have a go. Ask people online for advice. Everyone's so friendly. People are willing to share um, seeds as well to reduce the cost. So, yeah, just ask around. Have a go and just have fun. I love that you said that everything in life wants to live and that's so true. Like, I've had plants struggle in pots because I haven't gotten there yet, but they're still hanging on wanting to live. <laughs> <laughs> exactly Sorry. also yeah just grow like um for new pe beginners grow what you eat as well yeah so that's what how i started i grew so we want to reduce wastage so you don't want to grow something and then you not, don't eat it mm. so um we grow a lot of food that we eat weekly 
and then um, I try to introduce one or two new crops mm. so there's not like a huge wastage if we don't like it yeah. as well. So, yeah, just grow what you want and just grow a, yeah, a variety as well. So, and succession plant, which I need to get better at because mm. I'm not really that good at it's really hard. Oh, I, grow, like, <laughs> yeah, I grow heaps at the start, then I get distracted by babies and children, and then I forget to plant my next round of crops. Yeah. So that's what I need to work on. But as long as we do that, then we'll be fine. <laughs> but we do have a group as well that share their crops with us. So we're Love very it. lucky. Uh, that's one of the biggest things I've had to work on being on this journey was thinking about succession planting because prior I would do the same. Mm-hmm. I would plant something and then kind of not really think about the future where now I'm really having to um, think. I'm, I'm thinking about autumn and winter now, which is just crazy for me because I've never had to have that much foresight in the garden. I've just gardened for fun. <laughs> but if I don't have that foresight now, then we're not going to eat or we're not going to eat very much, <laughs> much variety. <laughs> Clarify. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why we're like next autumn, we want to get all our fruit trees in because we know it takes years for them to grow as well. So yeah. we're planning a long-term plan and trying to design it. Like we need to build some swales as well to help with the water so we don't because we live on a hill Mm. so yeah we need to think about the future and it's everything's not just going to happen short term it's a long-term goal yeah to like yeah so it's all about design and like we've been observing the sun locations as well so for new beginners you need to know where the sun goes because you need the suns to help your plants to grow and that's yeah, right. we're just trying to that's finding the location to grow the be the most productive. So yeah. We, we drive past this property twice a week and they installed a COVID garden in their dog run. And um every oh. time I drive past them, it's like, oh, it just I feel so bad. I want to knock on their door and say, um, have you observed? Because that garden receives zero sunlight. Mm. And it's planted under three massive (laughs) gum trees, which suck up all the moisture. And, you know, I see their garden, I see their garden Mm -hmm. failing and I'm like, oh, you could be doing so much better if you just moved it to the back of your house where you get sunlight, you know, all day and you haven't got any gum trees to interfere with your garden. And that's such an important point is to think about the best spot um, to grow your food. There's another house I drove past um, on the freeway and they've put their garden, um, their veggie garden at the back of the shed, probably so they don't see it because it can get untidy. But because they can't see it, A, they're not atten- tending to it, but B, it's also being shaded by that shed and it's it's not in the op- optimal b- position. So it's really, yeah, that's a really good point for beginner gardeners is to really think about the space. Yeah, we do have gum trees everywhere. So <laughs> my ideal location is under the gum trees. <laughs> However, I build up. Mm. So we figured now we have to have raised garden beds yep. to help hopefully moisture and the soil depth as well. Mm. So, yeah, it's like a different, like another step we had to design into it because of the gum trees but that's our ideal location and we've noticed we've got a lot of rabbits here so okay. we do need to build in raised garden because otherwise it will be another problem we have to tackle so that's right yeah we observing the land we think about the future and reduce like pest and no mm. as well and plus we have snakes as well so we need to consider that in our design yeah but yeah yeah. and trying to make it child friendly so yeah that's right yeah so that was a good (laughs) we um we've had a couple of snakes in our veggie patches and zara here was the first to see the first one and lucky i was there but i probably got more of a fright than she did she stood still and calm like i had told her to um 
prior to saying this now. <laughs> and I'm the one who screamed and yelled and tried to jump away, <laughs> which is the wrong thing to do. <laughs> yes. Well, we want to play some gravel in between our um, raised garden beds because we know the sound of the gravel will help. Mm-hmm. And like with a toddler myself, she would like to go and touch animals. So yeah. that's just like another deterrent, <laughs> like by putting gravel down. We just, yeah, all these like, we've got a lot of designs in our head, like yeah. just to solve problems before they become a problem. It so, sounds like you're on the right track. Yeah. It sounds like you're doing amazing. I love the idea of gravel um, to scare the snakes away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just another cost, though. That's a problem. So we did want to reduce the cost to garden yeah. in the first place. But, um, yeah, the safety is more important for our children. <laughs> yeah. And so, I think something with gravel is that it's not something you need to replace every year like you would mulch, like a wood mulch. Mm. um so at yeah. least it's something you'd only need to top up every five ten years I don't know maybe longer <laughs> yeah well it shouldn't um wash away where we're going to place it so hopefully yeah. it stays and it might be yeah. easy with weed management with the chickens as well so yeah we'll yeah. see how it goes nice that sounds so, awesome yeah that's for you New gardeners, we're always learning. <laughs> That's all right. I agree. I've been gardening for over 10 years and every day there's something. <laughs> Thank you so much for talking with us, Sam. I really enjoyed our talk and learning a bit more about your journey and your farm and what your plans are for that. Um, and I'll leave all the links to Sam's social media um, down below so you can go follow her on Instagram and see um, her amazing farm and everything that she's doing with it. <laughs> Thank you for chatting with me today. <laughs>